Hello everyone and welcome to this video of Sana. This is Vukas Siddiq. Today we are going to talk about the impedance spectroscopy and how you can set up the impedance spectroscopy measurement in the Thala software. For this, we'll click on this ICE icon and we land it in electrochemical impedance spectroscopy ICE window. Now here you can set your desired frequency range. So we, I'm going with 10 Hertz to 100 kilohertz the lower and upper limit then you can define step per decades for the lower frequencies and higher frequencies so for higher frequencies we have chosen a limit of 66 hertz because above 66 hertz the measurements are taking very less time so you can have relatively higher numbers and at lower frequency values so below 66 hertz you choose relatively less steps per decades or less measure periods because the time for the measurement will increase very fast okay so we can go to control potential stat and in control potential stat we can set our bias voltage so maybe i, I want to do a measurement at 0 0.1 volt so i will do 0 0.1 volt and then i can turn on my potential stat so i'm applying 100 millivolt and now i can set an amplitude of 10 millivolt and by applying the amplitude of 10 millivolt we see here the impedance and phase so you see these two values because here we have selected the impedance and phase if you select a second value then you will see real and imaginary impedance okay now a very interesting thing is these four windows so the upper one is ac voltage e so this is the sine wave of the voltage signal with the 10 millivolt excitation and this is the response of current so this is also a sine wave and these two windows are the Fourier transform of these two windows respectively that means here we are looking at the time domain and here we are looking at the frequency domain so this tells me that if i have one single line here and here that means we are in the linear range so we do not have to modify our amplitude let's say that if your amplitude is very high and you see here a sine wave but in your response you see more than one line here then you have to decrease your amplitude now if i turn off this measurement i can go to galvanostat and for this measurement i will choose the low z setting on my test box which i'm using as a dummy sample and for the low z in galvanostat mode i will put here 125 milli ampere as the dc bias turn it on and now i can give an amplitude and if i give a very small amplitude let's say 100 nano ampere you see that my amplitude is very very small i do not see any signal here so you have to increase your amplitude because if you do not see a line here in the Fourier transform window that means your amplitude is very small so let's increase it now i will go to one milli ampere and you see that we have some response so here is your excitation signal now and the voltage is your response signal of course one milli ampere is also very less so if i go to 10 milli ampere i should have sufficiently high signal so 10 milli ampere over 125 milli ampere dc current is a good value for this kind of sample but if i give higher excitations for example if i go to 100 milliampere i see now that my excitation signal which is the current value is one line but my response is not signed so this looks a bit distorted and if we look at the Fourier transform we see that we are now not in linear range but we are also getting the high frequency response and this is because the non-linearity in our system well as a general rule of thumb if you see such a behavior if you see such lines what you have to do is that you have to decrease your amplitude so what i'm doing here is i'm going a bit too extreme just to give you guys an idea that how to properly select the amplitude for different bias voltage or different bias current however you want to do your impedance measurement once you have selected a good enough amplitude where the both lines are single lines you can just go back and now i can start my measurement but before i start my measurement i'm going from one kilohertz to 100 kilohertz and then i'm going back so you have chosen here uh, this pattern so i'm going from middle to higher and then to the lower value 
we can also go from middle to the lower and to the higher value but if we do that then we are doing double measurements at the lower frequency and the time of the measurement will be very long so that's why a common practice is start from the center go to the higher frequency and then go to the lower frequency why do we do that i will show it to you so i start the measurement one thing which I also have to note down here is that for each measurement, we are showing you the Fourier transform. So anywhere you see more than one line, you know that you have to decrease your amplitude. Now, we start from the center. We are going to the higher frequencies and then we will go back to the lower frequencies. A condition for impedance spectroscopy is stationarity. That means your system should be stable. If it is not stable, if it is not stationary, the debt which you are getting when you are going from the middle frequency to higher frequency would be different than the data which you will decode when you are going from the higher frequency to backwards and if these data are not overlapping you know that your system is not stable and if it is not stable at these high frequencies it will not be stable at lower frequencies and then you will not get good results so this kind of hint if you are if your sample is good enough for this measurement or if it is too unstable and here we can see that it is good enough the data is overlapping perfectly so we can trust this impedance measurement and now we are at the end of the measurement and with this we are finished with the measurement we have the impedance data and we have the phase data you can save this measurement I will not save this measurement. Now we have done this measurement at constant current in galvanostatic mode. So the potential stat is on and we have to turn it off after the measurement. So with this, we came to the end of this video. I showed you that how you can do an impedance measurement. What is the function of these windows where you see the Fourier response, which helps you in choosing a suitable amplitude for your measurement. And also what is the function of these double measurement where you're starting from the center and you're going to the upper frequency and the lower frequency in the next video we will continue with impedance spectroscopy so today we did a measurement in galvanostatic mode similarly we can do a measurement in potential static mode and open circuit and pseudo galvanostatic mode so we will talk about this in the next video thank you for your time and see you in the next video